In this problem, we're told a skier is accelerating down a 30-degree hill at 1.8 meters per second squared. What is the vertical component of her acceleration, and how long will it take her to reach the bottom of the hill, assuming she starts from rest and accelerates uniformly if the elevation change is 325 meters? So they give you a diagram, but I'm just going to redraw it. So imagine this is our hill here. So this is going to be our hill, and we know that it's going to be a 30-degree hill. So this angle right here is going to be 30 degrees, and they tell us that. And so we know that they're going to be going down the hill. Their acceleration is going to be equal to 1.8 meters per second squared. They also tell us, though, in B that the elevation change is 325 meters. So if she starts here and ends here, we know that this length right here is going to be 325 meters. So let's label that. And this is going to be our drawing, and we're going to use this to help solve. So let's go ahead and start with A. So A is to find the vertical component. So the vertical component, since we're given a vector here, the vector is 1.8 uh, meters per second squared, which is our acceleration. So the vertical component is going to be this length right here, but in terms of acceleration. So how do we go about finding that? So if you imagine this is a triangle, right? So this is a triangle. And if you take the sine of the angle that they give us, 30 degrees, so the sine of 30, and we know sine is uh, opposite over hypotenuse, correct? So the opposite side over our, our uh, hypotenuse side. So our hypotenuse, right, which goes on the bottom, is going to be 1.8. And then right here, we don't know what it is. And that's what we're trying to find, right, the vertical component. That's what we're solving for. And I'm just going to call it y. So if we say this is y, if we want to solve for it now, all we got to do is multiply both sides by 1.8. So imagine this is right there. But 1.8 times the sine of 30, uh, that's going to give us uh, what y is, so our vertical component. So if you plug this in your calculator, you're going to get that uh, y. In this case, I'm just going to call it a, right? Our new acceleration, the acceleration of the vertical component. Uh, you can label it however you want. I can call it a of y. But a of y is going to be equal to 0.9 meters per second squared. So all we did was use this to find the vertical component. So now we've got the vertical component. That's going to be a. So now let's find b. So b says, how long will it take her to reach the bottom of the hill? And so this is going to be b. And so what we're going to use is a kinematic equation, and uh, we're going to be using this one. So the equation is delta y equals b sub 0 times t plus 1 half a times t squared. And so this may look daunting, but let's just see what we're given, and then we're just going to plug in the values into the equation. So what are we given? Well, we know this is going to be vertically, right? So we're just focused on the vertical direction. Ignore uh, this thing right here, because this is... Uh, in like a mid direction, right? It's like on the Z axis or whatever. Just ignore it, just focus on what we know vertically. So vertically, we know the acceleration is 0.9 meters per second squared. So we know that. What else do we know though? They tell us that V sub zero, which is just the initial velocity, is gonna be, or we start from rest. So if we start from rest, that means our initial velocity is gonna be zero. So it's gonna be zero meters per second. And so we also got that. But what else do we have? We know that the elevation change is going to be 325 meters. So we call that delta y. So delta y is just the change from our top to the bottom. In this case, they tell us it's 325. So delta y equals 325 meters. And so we're trying to find how long it will take, right? So how long? They're asking about a time. So we can just write t equals question mark because that's what we're trying to solve for. And if you look at all the variables that we're given, this formula, we can plug it in, plug all our variables in, and solve for t. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So if we start plugging everything in. Delta y, we know, is 325. So I'm going to do it over here. So 325 equals v sub 0, which is 0, times t, plus 1 half times a, which is 0.9, times t squared. And so if you look at this right here, 0 times t is just going to cancel, right? Because 0 times 0 is 0. So we're going to get 325 equals 1 half times 0.9 uh, times t squared. And so 1 half times 0.9 is going to be 0.45. So we have 0.45 times t squared. And if we want to solve for it, we can divide both sides by 0.45. So t squared equals 325 divided by... 0.45. So if you plug that in your calculator, 325 divided by 0.45, you should get 
22, 722.22 and so on. And so if we want to find t, we just got to square root both sides. So t equals the square root of this. And if you go ahead and square root it, uh, you should get 26.87 and so on, uh, 8741 and so on. And I'm not sure how you're told to round. You can probably round however you want. Uh, I'm just going to round this up this uh, to the tens place. So this is going to become 26.9. So t is going to be equal to 26.9. And then keep in mind, this is time, right? And we've been using seconds in here, meters per second. So it's going to be in seconds. So the answer to B is going to be 26.9 seconds. And so, yeah, that's how you solve this problem.